Hi there, my name is V. In this video, we're going to show you how you can prepare for your selective schools test if you are in year seven or um, doing a test to enter year seven or doing a test to enter into year nine. And we're going to focus specifically on written expression. So this video will go through some you know, uh, similar past questions while highlighting key tips for you to include in your writing to help you gain that advantage. And we're going to also talk about time management. So in a selective school test, for written expression, they'll ask you to write a piece. Okay, they call this written expression. And one of the questions that you will be, uh, you know, some of the questions that some of you may have, and this video is organized in terms of a question and answer, is what am I going to write about? Well, it really depends on your exam and the particular test you're going to be taking. So for example, the Victorian Selective Schools test, what you're tested on is both a narrative and a persuasive writing piece. So sometimes with a narrative or, you know, sometimes it's also called a creative writing piece, people often think, can I do a poem? And usually my answer to that is, well, can you write a perfect narrative? Because poetry is actually really hard. If you can write a perfect narrative where you're sure that you'd get an A plus for, well then by all means, do a poem. But, you know, if it specifies a narrative, just write a narrative, okay? Um, and then a persuasive writing piece here, so two pieces, and that's for year nine entry. For, you know, New South Wales, Queensland, WA, for a selective school spot, there is usually one writing piece. So this could be either. So it could be a persuasive writing piece or creative writing piece, and you most times you don't know what's going to be there on the test, so you need to prepare for both, just to cover your basis. So historically, WA has um, been a creative writing piece in the past, but there's not to say that in the future, um, or in the exam that you might be sitting, if you're sitting for WA, that you will be sitting a persuasive writing piece. So you need to prepare for both equally, and you need to know the different structures in both narrative and persuasive writing. In terms of how much time do you have to write? Well, usually it's 20 minutes, okay? And this also depends on your exam. Your exam might be 25 minutes, 20 minutes. For year nine, this is a Victorian one, it's 15 minutes. Again, you need to check with your exam. What this time limit means is that Time is of essence, or time is very, very important, or just very important, okay? When you come to your exam and you sit down and you are given your writing prompt, you need to make sure that you spend your time doing a particular process, and we're going to go through that process later on in this video, and this process must be optimized, that means done in such a way that you're reducing any wastage because the goal in this exam is, and it's this is why it's different from something like, you know, uh, an essay that you need to write for school where there is no time limit but, you know, perhaps a due date. The difference with this exam is that you are pressed for time and writing a good writing piece, you know, in that time frame is actually really hard. What I'd suggest you do is the goal in the exam is not to write a writing piece that is a piece that is worthy to be published in a book, okay? You don't want to aim for that. You want to aim for a story that is short enough to be able to be written really well in the time frame that you're given, okay? So that's a very different thing to writing sort of a masterpiece. You don't want to aim for the masterpiece, you want to aim to write a very, very, very good writing piece in that short amount of time that you have. You also want to write a complete piece, okay? So there, there's a slight difference. You're not writing a masterpiece. That takes a long time and a lot of editing and a lot of complexity. You're writing a piece that is neat, that can be done within the time frame and done very well, okay? And also, a piece that stands out from everyone else. Okay, so imagine, put yourselves in, 
put yourself in the shoes of the assessor. Imagine you had to sit there and read essay after essay. Say you had to read 10,000 essays. How would you feel after that? You know, it's like eating a, a pie or one particular food again and again for, I don't know, 10,000 times. You know, what you'll notice is something that's different from one pie to the other and one that stands out more than the other because you're so used to it. The same with when someone's reading, uh, sorry, when someone's reading your writing piece. You've got a short time limit, so you need to make everything count there. Okay, so the next question we're going to move on to is this. How much do I write? So a lot of teachers are very reluctant to provide you with number of words. And the reason why, and I can understand this, is because when you provide students with the amount of words, they actually end up you know, writing exactly that amount or they focus on word count when that should not be the case at all. The thing is, what I've seen is good writing pieces, especially for that, you know, 20 minute time limit, 15 minute time limit, they're usually around 450 words and in four paragraphs, okay? The four paragraphs are usually very complete and they show that full, um, that full idea that they want to present in their writing piece. Okay, so 250 words, this is approximately, but this does not compromise quality. Okay, first comes the quality of your writing and, you know, the ones I've seen from experience that have very good quality tend to always be around that 250 word range, around about that, that range, you know, it could be 240, 260, but usually not more than that. Okay, and when they usually put more than that, they have a lot of telling sentences or when they have less than that, the storyline seems very, um, very bare and basic. Okay, so that's just my general guidance in terms of word count. So 250 words. You know, I don't want you to go counting your words, but rather, you know, write out your piece. And if you are, you know, missing that 250 word mark, perhaps look at why. Are you showing enough? Are you telling too much? Um, is your storyline developed enough for that particular story? Okay. For a persuasive writing piece, for 250 words, you're looking at around at least four paragraphs. So you've got your introduction, you've got your argument, argument one, you've got your argument two, and then you've got your conclusion. This is at basic. This is the most basic one. Instead of argument three, which is what a lot of people do, I would actually get rid of that. I wouldn't do that. I would do a counter argument and a reorientation. Just so that you can show to the reader that you can think of an argument for the other side and really dispute it to bring the reader onto your side. And when it says, and it could go up to five paragraphs, that would be with this counter argument and reorientation. Now, the other question I do get asked a lot when we talk about selective schools test and preparation is what level of writing do they want? Okay, so the level of writing that is expected from you in terms of you know, written expression is at a very high level, but this level is not as high as a scholarship, okay? Because selective schools are public schools and there are, you know, many spaces there. Um, however, with a scholarship, the scholarship usually has one or two spots there. And it's just harder to get a scholarship mainly because of the competition involved and also um, the scarcity of spaces. So, you know, instead of a, a selective school offering, say, 300 spots, a scholarship may offer one spot at a particular school. So therefore, it's very hard to get that position unless you tick all their boxes in the right way. Okay, And also because scholarships offer people a financial reward in terms of reduced school fees. Um, so their level of demand is much, so the level they expect from the people who are successful for a scholarship is much higher than um, a selective, a selective school, which is also very demanding as well. Um, 
sorry, not the word, I think the word demanding is not the right word there, but perhaps, um, which all, has also very high expectations as well. So in terms of the level of writing they want, it's not going to be as high as a scholarship, okay, but it's still very high. So when you're saying very high, this is about getting A's at school, okay, or being the top of your grade. And when I say A, you know, generally an A, you know, across the board, generally this means that you are two grade levels above your current grade for English and other things. But for written expression, you're talking about two grade levels above your current grade. Okay, and this is for writing. When you're, do you, when you're doing English at school, you know, you've got reading and writing, but you can generally say that the writing they want is generally an A level. So two grades above your current grade or higher. So what are we going to do now? We're going to talk about time-saving strategies when it comes to your exam. So the question is, what do I do and how do I save time in an exam? Well, in an exam, you need to go in there prepared. Just like a person, you know, a pilot um, comes into the plane and does their checklist before they fly the plane so that they, everything goes smoothly, you hope. Um, and just like, you know, someone who's preparing for um, a race, they don't just get off of the bus and then, you know, walk onto the racetrack and then just run. They do warm-ups and they have a series of warm-ups they go through. So that's a process before they do the race so that they're prepared. And in the race, they may have a certain way they, um, they swing their arms. They may have a certain like um, way they run that makes it go faster. It, may, it might be something that they wear. Just like that, you need to have a process that you can follow to make sure that you don't waste time in the exam. Okay, and this is that process. It's a three-step process. And it's this. The first one here is planning. The second one is writing. And the third one is review. Okay, so planning involves this. For written expression, there's two different types of planning. And there is a specific video that deals with planning. And if you want to um, if you want to do this video or want to go through this video, please get in touch with me and I can direct you to it or I can add it to your roadmap for writing club. But essentially when you plan, you're going to be planning at the paragraph level. This is for creative writing. You're going to know what you're going to have in paragraph one, paragraph two, paragraph three and paragraph four. Okay. For argumentative, you're going to have to know what arguments. Well, before that, you're going to have to know what position you're going to take. So are you for or against? Okay, you just choose for or against. You don't need to worry about the arguments first. You just choose a position. And then you come up with your argument one and argument two. Okay, the thing to note is that planning does not mean brainstorming, okay? Brainstorming is when you sit there and you think about the, all the possible options that could be out there. You could think, oh, sh if I went with this one, if I went with this position and I said, I, I think that junk food should not be sold in schools, I'll think of three or four reasons why it should not be sold. If I then choose you know, this reason that it should be sold, I'm going to think of another four reasons why it should be sold. Okay, that's all brainstorming. We're thinking of different reasons. Do not do that in an exam. Your planning needs to be to the point so it cuts out any time being wasted. When you brainstorm, yes, you might come out with something better at the end, but you're wasting precious time. That could be used to write and write a really good piece. Okay, because you don't get marked for brainstorming and coming up with all these different options. You get marked for what's there on the paper and what's there that can be read. Okay, so, you know, planning is not brainstorming. You need to make sure your planning process is very to the point and in a way which does not, you know, reduces the error that you could be making in 
the writing part. Okay. This part here, planning, is often, as I've seen, is often done really badly. Okay, um, or if it's not done badly, it's not done at all. And when I read pieces of writing that are really confusing, but there are no other problems like grammar and spelling. I always see that it's a problem to do with planning. People don't even think it's important, but here's why it is. Say you don't do any planning whatsoever. So this here, you don't do. You leave it blank because you don't think it's important. And a lot of people don't think it's important, right? And you start to write. So you write your essay and you write one paragraph and you finish a whole piece. And then you spend, you know, about five minutes writing one paragraph, this particular paragraph. At the point where you decide to read through your writing, you discover that this one particular paragraph, and just say you spent three, three minutes reading through the whole thing and thinking through it um, and thinking, oh, this one paragraph doesn't actually make sense. It's not supposed to be there. It doesn't actually relate to the storyline. It brings my storyline totally to another place. So I don't want it there. So you decide to take that out and you read through and that decision to take it out along with reading through the whole piece to three minutes. So I'm going to cross that out. You take out that paragraph and it means that your five minutes that you've spent on this piece has been wasted because you haven't used this. So to your ass exam assessor, when they read it, they'll just say, oh, they haven't included it, fine. So no marks are going to be given to that. So what that means is you spent eight minutes, you know, when you think about something that's 20 minutes as an exam, um, that's, you know, add another two minutes, that's already half. So, and when you think about 15 minutes, that's even worse. You're spending, you know, you're spending much more time as a proportion for doing these two things that you didn't even use, okay? This is why this process of step one, planning, step two, writing, and step three, review, is really important. If you had planned this here, and generally your planning takes three minutes, and at the planning stage, you decide that, hey, this paragraph that I've got planned here isn't going to work, so I'm going to change it to do another one. So plan paragraph two, version two. You've got a new version of it here, right? But then to make that change and to make that decision, it only took you an additional minute. So all up, you've only spent four minutes planning. Yeah, it's one additional minute saving you eight minutes lost. This is why we do planning. You use one minute to do that additional plan and to make sure your structure is in place. So that you save, you know, an approximately, you know, you save approximately around eight minutes fixing up the mistake after you've written it through, written it out. Okay, this is why it's important to plan. Okay, how about writing? What do you do in writing? When you have a plan in place, all you have to do is pretty much just write it out, and you make sure your paragraphs within the paragraphs flow okay it also means that paragraph to paragraph also flows as well and there's also videos dedicated to showing you how you can do that within each paragraph with different types of text and in the review what you should be doing is if you've fixed up all the structural problems in the plan um, planning stage review only means really checking your expression you know spelling mistakes any grammatical mistakes and it should be really a high level thing you don't want to be going in there and changing out huge chunks of paragraphs at that stage. If you do, you know, you can't avoid that, but you want to, you know, if you do it and it's in the exam, you know, you have to fix it up at that time. However, you know, you don't want to get to that point by planning properly, writing and reviewing and doing this when you're preparing for your exam. Okay, so... What we're going to do now is we're going to look through a sample question and I'm going to give you some key tips about this. So this was a similar question, this picture here, 
to one that sort of appeared in a, a selective school test. So this is quite a hard one because there's a television and then there's, there's a tree in it. So it's very hard to understand what you really want to do with this. So what are we going to do for the structure, expression, spelling, grammar, and relationship to the prompt? Well, at this level, so year seven and year nine, according to NAPLAN, spelling and grammar should be already mastered, okay, especially for simple words and the most common words. So down here, if you're having spelling mistakes, that's not a good sign. Um, when I say spelling mistakes, I mean intentional, you know, sorry, spelling mistakes that appear nearly in every paragraph, okay, and they don't look accidental, okay. So at this point, you need to have mastered this. So that's at the basic level. Above that, when you're looking at structure, so for this particular story, and this is a creative writing piece, they're going to want an intro, um, they're going to want a lead up to the main event, and they're going to want a main event, and then they're going to want an ending. Okay, you need all three things. For expression, the key difference is this idea of showing versus telling. Okay, that, that is what stands out at this level for selective schools test. When I say showing, what I mean is this. So let's say you have this um, particular thing and it's weird looking and you want to perhaps show to the reader that this tree um, this television is in the tree. So you can write something like this. There is a television in a tree. When you close your head and someone says to you, there is a television in a tree, everyone would imagine this in a very different way. Okay. However, when you show, you sort of put this image in the reader's mind. So you'd write something like this. Nested on the trunk of the stumpy tree was an old boxy grey television that nested on the trunk of the stumpy tree was an old boxy grey television, full stop, okay. This showing says how the TV is there, it's nested and we can sort of see, oh, it's on an old boxy grey television and it's nested on the trunk. So to enhance it even further, you could write something like this, nested on the trunk among some twiggy, twig, like branches of the stumpy tree was an old boxy grey television. So nested on the trunk, on a trunk of, nested on a trunk, nested on the trunk of the stumpy tree And among some twig-like branches was an old boxy grey television. Okay, now let's keep going. So for spelling, you've already, you know, they've already said that you should be have mastered this. And how about the relationship to the prompt? Well, the story needs to be about the television set in the tree. So you can't have a story about, say, something else like being in the forest and happening to wander across this tree, um, but then walking across and the story is really about a rescue or being lost in the woods. Okay, The story must feature the tree centrally. So, you know, an example of what a past student did for this prompt was this. So they wrote something like, yeah, they wrote um, that um, their father was obsessed with televisions and they 
and put them in trees. Okay, so it was a really simple story um, that didn't have any complex words, was really well written, and a simple short story that he could write in the exam and was successful as a result of that. Okay, now how about this topic? This is a selective, you know, similar to a selective um, uh, question selective exam question and it's a persuasive writing piece type question so I'm going to read through it and I'm going to talk about it so nowadays with the internet people are easily accessible and the distinction between work and rest has blurred a three-day weekend can provide additional rest time along with reduced commuting at the same time services that were usually on a weekend like the post would most likely not be delivered as a result of a three-day weekend should Australia implement a three-day weekend, argue for or against? So again, this type of question here would want, um, because it's a persuasive writing piece, it, it lends itself to a particular structure. So that's your introduction, and you need to signpost. Well, you need to show your position first, and you need to signpost. Okay. Then you need to show argument one, argument two, um, your counter argument, and reorientation and then after that can kind of argument reality and your conclusion okay that's the structure you should be taking for your argumentative piece okay very different to something like a narrative because we're not here telling a story in terms of expression you want to avoid expression that's um, you know over the top so you know, things like where you use multiple exclamation marks. So this should definitely be done. You don't, we want to avoid something like that. You want to show how thoughtful you are. Okay, and you also want to, you know, adopt a neutral tone. So instead of something like that, you'd say a three day weekend would allow sufficient rest time you know and as you know and you keep going okay also in terms of creating this structure there is also a separate video about this as well that will help you if you are um, not sure about the structure of a persuasive writing piece or in, in this case also the expression okay and what you should also do with this is develop full arguments, okay? These are arguments that explain why, so why, why should we believe a position? Give us one claim, one reason, and then you need to support your reason, okay? And you can support that through examples. You can support, um, support that through anecdotes um, and a whole range of other things. You can also do logical reasoning. These are the things they'll be looking for. And how about this? Spelling and grammar, you should have already mastered that. And finally, finally relationship to the prompt. Well, this is about a three-day weekend. It's should Australia implement a three-day weekend, okay? What you should avoid is when people read the question incorrectly. So you shouldn't be saying, yes, the world should implement, have, a three day weekend. Yes, everyone should have a three day weekend. Or no, three day weekends are bad. Okay, so these are things you wouldn't want to be wouldn't want to be writing. So the first one is yes, we should have a the world should have a three day weekend. It's about Australia, it's not about the world. How about everyone should have a three-day weekend? Remember, it's not should everyone have a three-day weekend. It's about should Australia implement a three-day weekend? And finally, no, three-day weekends are bad. Well, the question isn't about is a three-day weekend bad, yes or no, or good, yes or no. It's about should this be implemented, yes or no. If yes, 
why. If no, why not? Okay, so reading the question is very important um, when it comes to these types of exams. Okay, very important here. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video about selective schools test and key tips for your written expression test.